same way. Number 12 says, everyone sins a little, but most people are good by nature. What I was hoping is that people would strongly disagree with that. And most did. We had 24 strongly disagree, three somewhat disagree, and then two somewhat agree and two strongly agree. Okay? And then number 15 is directly tied to this. Everyone is born innocent in the eyes of God. I also was looking for strongly disagree on that one, and we had 20 strongly disagree, one somewhat, one not sure, one somewhat agree, and eight strongly agree. So that was a concerning one right there that we need to address. And this, what this deals with is the concept of a sinful nature, which means that we begin our lives as sinful beings in need of redemption, that we don't begin our lives in perfection and then ruin ourselves, that we begin separated from God in need of redemption. And that's what the Bible teaches. And I'm going to show us why. Psalm 51.5 says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And of course, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that all word is pretty, well, it's pretty all-encompassing. All. But here's the thing. We, we, there's two aspects of sin that we need to understand. See, we usually only think about sin as something that we do. And that is true. The Bible teaches that sin is something that we do. But it's more than that. It's also something that we have. Okay? And so we have to stop thinking about sin as only something we do and realize that it's also intrinsic. It's a part of the curse. It's, a, it's something that we have from the very beginning. And how does that work? Where did it begin? Because we know that when God made the world, it was perfect. When He made Adam and Eve, they didn't have sin at the beginning. But look at Genesis 5, 1 through 3. This is the book of the generations of Adam. When God created man, He made him in the likeness of God. So we know we're made in the image of God. That's true. Male and female, he created them, and he blessed them and named them man when they were created. Listen to this. When Adam had lived 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. See, so that, there's a shift At, when, when Adam and Eve, after they had sinned and they had that first child, there's a shift. And Adam being the head of the family... He has also been, people have labeled, there's a term that they've come up with, the federal head, kind of the federal head of humanity. And federal head is not in the Bible, but the teaching is. All right, and so we need to picture sin as being like a hereditary disease. All right, that, but here's the thing, it's only passed through the dads. So, and that's going to connect as well. Last week we also used Romans 5.12, therefore just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. And so this is, it's this disease that has spread everywhere. And understanding our sinful nature and how it spreads through the male through the, the men, the fathers, it also connects to Christ's virgin birth, right? See, now, if you're familiar with the Catholic faith, you know there would be Catholics who would say, well, Mary was perfect. So they would believe that, and that's how he was able to, that's how Jesus could be born without sin, but that's completely made up. The Bible gives us no indication of that. There's completely the opposite. And then you have the problem of, well, how did Mary not have a sinful nature? How did she not be born with sin? And how far does it go back? You know? and, but the problem is that Mary was sinful, but Jesus was able to be born without that sinful nature because he didn't have an earthly father, which is what we see taught throughout Scripture about how sin is passed and how it's a part of our nature. And because sin is intrinsic in our flesh, we still have a battle going on. That's why when we get saved and we become a new creation in Christ, and we're given that new heart, we're not given a new flesh yet. And so we still have this battle going on with the new heart and the old flesh. That's why Paul said in Romans 7, 17 and 18, So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. 
For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. So Paul was talking about that struggle that we still have as Christians that he had of like, I know what I ought to do, but I keep doing what I shouldn't do. And he's, like, and that he's teaching about that. I, I'm new inside, but my flesh is still old and I struggle with it. And as long as we are still tied to these bodies and we don't have our glorified bodies, we're going to still have a problem with sin's power in our life. Colossians 3.5, Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So he says, put to death what is in you. And that, that's the part of that fleshly self. Sin is not just something we do, it's something that we have. It's a part of the curse. I mean, think about this. Remember that sin, you remember Genesis, we're studying Genesis right now. Sin didn't just impact humans, did it? It impacted animals, it impacted plant life, the whole creation. All of creation was impacted. So what sin has your dog or your rosebush committed? Well, none, but they're still impacted by sin. They're still cursed. You know, we got those thorns now. Oh. You know, animals, they're dangerous now. They weren't dangerous before sin. So sin has impacted everything. There's a curse that we are also under. But it also gives us something to look forward to. That one day, the curse will be broken. And we won't, not only will we have the new heart, but we'll have the new body. And sin will be removed. And this is all huge. This is a huge thing because if you don't understand, if you believe that people are good by nature, then you, you can't have a biblical worldview. And, and the way that you look at everything is going to be skewed. We need to understand that when we are born, here, here's the way to think about it. When you are born, you're facing the wrong direction. Okay? You're not born facing the right direction and heading towards God. You're born facing the wrong direction. And then you start to choose, how fast am I going to head away from God? You know? And, and when we're little and, and children, they seem so innocent, but you don't have to teach them how to sin. They'll learn that on their own. It's natural. It's intrinsic. All right? And so, but when we're little, yeah, we're going to start by kind of like scooting away from God, and then we're going to start crawling away from God, and then we're going to start getting up on our feet and wobbling away from God, and then we're going to start walking away from God, and then we're going to start running away from God if, we are, if someone doesn't intervene. And that's why repentance is the word used in Scripture. Repent means to turn. So we start life facing the wrong direction, and then the question is, when are we going to turn and face the right direction and start going the other way? And the good news is, it doesn't matter how far you've ran. It doesn't matter how fast you've ran. As long as you repent, then the old is forgotten. And we're going to see that in the sermon today as well. And so I pray that you'll understand this, that you'll have a biblical worldview about this, and that if you are still turned the wrong direction, that you'll... Have your repentance today.